Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, I wanna show you how you can use samples to enhance your drums and how you can help get your drums to cut through a mix by using samples to augment and enhance what you already have as far as your recording goes. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, something you may wanna consider if you don't already do it. Before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell so you know when I post new content. Also, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I wanna give you a free mixing course worth about 50 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm gonna give you another free gift. So let's check this out. So here's kind of a mixed tip here in Studio One or in any doll you can do this with. I wanna show you something that I use all the time and a lot of people tend to forget about. So I'm gonna talk about drums specifically. So we have a quick little uh, static mix here. Um, I wanna play you back some audio here. And right now I'm gonna mute the two sample tracks that I added for the kick and the snare. And I'll talk you through it here in a second. But here's a little section of music here, just instruments where we just did kind of a quick mix using the SSL channel strip by waves. And we just dialed this in. Take a listen to this. This is just a basic drums, bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, piano kind of a vibe. And for our, our drum set, we just have a kick, a snare, hats, toms, overheads, and room down here in brown. So let's take a quick listen. This is without the samples that are in yellow, and then I'll talk you through the samples. So here we go. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with here. So if we kind of just solo up put this sample track here. So here's our two kick drums. So this particular session has um, a kick in and a kick out mic, which again, I did a little EQ and compression on the Waves SSL channel strip, but we don't need to take a look at the detail there. If I just solo up our in, kick in. Here's our kick in with some processing. Here's the kick out with a little more low ends. There's our kick drum sound. Both those kick drums are being routed over here to a kick group track. Okay, now I've put the uh, SSL channel strip on the individual tracks, but you can just as easily process it on the group track. Okay, sounds pretty good. Okay, and here's our snare. We had one snare track. Okay, so there's our kick snare sound. Sounds pretty good. And again, when you blend it with all the music. Sounds okay, but you kind of lose some of the punch. The drums get a little bit lost in the, in the mix there when you bring all the rest of the instrumentation in. So one thing that I do an awful lot, and this is very popular, a lot of people don't realize this, is using samples to enhance or augment what you already have. And so there's a couple of ways you can go about this. You can go about replacing the drum sounds with samples, or you can just use them to enhance what you already have, which is what I typically do. And so what I do here is I created um, in the yellow here, I just took our kick out track and just duplicated it. And then on that track, I'm using Slate Trigger 2. Now there's other plugins and drum replacement programs that you can, or plugins that you can use. There's Addictive Trigger, there's Drumagog, and I'm sure there's others, but I like Slate Trigger 2. I've been using it for years. It's super simple, it's affordable, and um, it's just easy to use. So I make a duplicate of that kick track, and then I go over to our browser, and I just use, and all I use are the samples that came with the Slate Trigger 2. I don't have any additional samples, although you can purchase those as well, but they give you a plethora of great kick samples here. And I just added a kick. Oops, let me take off the mute here. And added that sample. Typically I like to find a sample that has a little bit more of the slap, a little bit more of the click and not so much the low end because that's what gets the, that gives us that point to kind of cut through the mix. Especially if I already have a kick out track or a sub mic, which is giving me some of the low end. But what I like about Trigger is you can blend up to, I think, what is it, eight? Eight samples, you can layer this. So this is just one sample, but you could have easily then picked something else. Like here's a kick track here and we can maybe take this one down here.
and you can kind of blend them together. More times than not, I'm typically using just one sample to find something from a, from a, from a tone point of view that I'm looking to enhance the kick drums that I already have. I'll just remove this. And then what I do is I blend it in. So let me show you what this sounds like. So if we go back to our, just our two kick mics here. Now, if I bring in our sample, before, after. Now, how does that really help us in the mix? Well, let's find out here. Let me mute the snare here. So I'll start with, oops, I don't want that solo saved. I'll start with it muted, then I'll bring in the sample. You can hear how it helps kick, cut that kick drum through the mix. Okay, so it really helps it just pop through the mix and you can blend it into taste. So what I like, now the way you can do this is you can also put Trigger 2 on one of the original tracks and then in on this particular um, plugin, you can use the mix knob here and you can dial in how much of the wet dry you want. But what the way I like to use it is I like to make an actual separate track, call it kick sample in this case, keep it on 100% wet and then I like to blend it in with the fader here. So just by bringing it down. And what I like about using this technique is that I'm not replacing the original drum sounds. I'm keeping those louder in the mix and I'm just using the sample to just kind of bring it into taste. Some people will feel, and I've heard people say to me in the past, oh, using samples is like cheating. It's really cheating in when you're mixing and such, and it's not a good way to do things. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I know a lot of mixers that work in LA and in Nashville, personal friends of mine, and I, I've talked to them about this topic before. Samples are used all the time, and most modern music that you hear on the radio, there are, I'd say 90% of the time in professional commercial releases, you are gonna hear samples and the drum sounds, for sure. More times than not, they're used this way to uh, augment what's already there, to enhance what's already there, because typically when you're talking about commercially released records, the drums are usually recorded really, really well in top, you know, top-notch studios by great engineers. So the original sounds are still great. This is a way to add a little bit of girth, a little bit of pop, and a little bit of, you know, thickness to the drums without having without replacing the entire drum sounds. Now, what's great about something like Trigger 2 or any kind of drum replacement uh, plugin like this is that if you're working with, say, drums that are not recorded very well and they're terribly recorded, which happens a lot, especially in the home studio environment, you can completely replace the sound with professional sounding drums. But most times I use it in this way as I use it to enhance, not to replace, and it really helps. Same thing with the snare. I did the same thing with the snare sound. Here's our original snare, just kind of sold this up, which sounds great on its own. Great snare sound, nothing wrong with that snare sound at all. But now I brought in a sample. Okay. And again, using trigger, I actually used two samples this time. So if you want to hear the samples that I use, this is where I layered a couple. So I used this sample and this sample and blended them together. And again, it comes with a whole host of great samples. Um, and if you want to check out Trigger 2, I'll leave the link in the description box out to Sweetwater. You could buy this at Sweetwater, I think for less than a hundred bucks. In full disclosure, that's an affiliate link. So if you do purchase Slate Trigger or anything else at Sweetwater, I get a small commission, but you're helping support what I do here and you don't pay anything more for the product. A lot of people don't realize you can buy these plugins at Sweetwater. You don't have to buy it from Slate anyway. Um, so that's what I did here. And then you can actually use the faders here inside of the little mixer to blend the samples if you want. You can pan them, you can tune them, you could do all kinds of stuff. But again, let's listen to it with all the music again. And here we go. So what I'll do is I'll start with it off and I'll bring the snare sample in. The snare sample in. Here we go. Okay, 
So there you go. So you can get it to get that crack to kind of come through. So depending on the music that you're working on and the way the snare, the original snare sounds will depend on what sample I use from a tonal point of view. And then again, I'll take those two tracks and I will typically bring them down to a bus track or to a group track, snare groups. And then I'll also maybe put some compression or maybe some EQ on the package, if you will, of the snare and the snare sample together. Same thing with the kicks, I didn't do that here. So now if I were to take both of these kick snares away, let me just move the kick sample over here and let me mute both of them. Oops, here we go. And start with it before and then I'll bring in both samples at the same time and you can hear the difference. Okay, so there you go. So consider using samples as a way to enhance what you already have with your original drum sound. I do the same thing with Tom Toms as well. I just showed you kick snare here, but this is a great way to get that drum kit to really pop through the mix, to give it some extra texture and some extra beef and, and some thickness without making it sound muddy and having to do massive amounts of EQ on the original tracks. Sometimes just adding a sample for that tonal aspect that you're missing from the original sounds really makes a difference. And like I said, it is widely popular. It is used all the time in popular music by famous engineers. Anything you hear on the radio, most of it will have samples there to enhance your sound. So I hope you found this little tip helpful. Try it out and see if you like. And again, check out Slate Trigger 2 or any of the other uh, programs. Like I said, I'll leave the links below for Slate Trigger, Addictive Trigger, and Drumagog. Those are the three main ones. They're all great. They're all relatively the same price. They all come with a bunch of samples. And I think if you work with any kind of recorded acoustic drums, um, you should have something like that because you'll find you'll use it more and more and more. So check the links in the description box below. So thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Now, as I said at the beginning, I want to give you another free gift. So I told you at the beginning of the video, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your free mixing course on the website. It's right on the homepage. You can't miss it. It's my gift to you just for visiting Home Recording Made Easy. Now, if you're someone that's already been to Home Recording Made Easy a bunch of times and you already have the free course, well, I'm going to help you here as well. So whether you don't have the free course or whether you already watched the free course and you have it, if you want to take any of the other paid training that's on my website, and I have training around recording, mixing, mastering, EQ compression, parallel compression, blah, 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 blah. And if you're a Studio One user, I have a bunch of Studio One specific training courses as well. I wanna give you a discount for checking it out. So the discount coupon code that you can use at checkout is, is YouTube25. That'll take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website. It'll be in the description box below. Go ahead and check that out as well. So I wanna thank you so much for checking out this video. And until next time, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will see you very soon. Take care, everybody.